Hello and welcome to tonight's show. Welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to the last video about the four month trip through Central America. Today we are going to talk about who is going to do a long trip, when, where, why and the majority of the video is going to be about the how. And in this part I'm going to teach you about everything that I learned and took away from this experience things I've learned, things I would do differently next time, things that I would do over and over again. And maybe leave in the comments down below if you did a longer trip as well and what you were able to learn from it. So share with everyone else watching. And now without further ado, let's start with the who. And that's pretty easy because you and I, we all should try to do such a trip at least once in a lifetime. I would like to do it again because I really enjoyed it, even though it was quite pricey. I talked about that in the last video. If you haven't watched that, maybe do that after this video. But yeah, you should try to somehow get the chance to do something like that. And I'm going to talk later on how that might be possible. Second question is why should everybody do such a trip and if you don't know that by now I'm not really sure why you're around but maybe let me teach you because travel is going to teach you and that's for me the biggest why because on travels you are going to meet so many different people's cultures ways to think, ways to feel and you're going to learn about yourself. You have to maybe hit anxieties from time to time because you will get into situations you might not have in your normal everyday life and so travels are always challenging but they are so full of experiences, so full of feelings and and that's the biggest why I guess. Let's get into the bigger topics. The third one of which is the where. And I guess that totally depends on first preferences. If you have like a region, an area you're really interested in. If you have a culture that really intrigues you or if you have been to certain areas or continents before and you really like them. Like I was a really big Southeast Asia fan from the beginning, from my very first backpack trip on. But that was the reason for me to go somewhere else now because I haven't been to the West looking from the perspective of Europe to the western part of the world until now. And so that was the choice for me. And if I would do another trip, maybe I would choose Africa because I didn't do that yet. But maybe Southeast Asia because I'm really deeply in love with that. Second question that comes into play here is money. In the last video I told you how much the trip was and that in Southeast Asia I would have paid way, way, way less. So maybe if you are on a tighter budget you should rather go to the East and East Asia, Southeast Asia and then you might either be able to go longer or afford the trip in the first place. Another question that comes into play is do you want to do one region? And for me that is quite a clear yes because that will save the climate at least a little bit because we crossed the border from Costa Rica to Panama by foot. We'll take off two different countries but you will not have to take a flight and you can yeah, just go from country to country or you can decide to do a bucket list trip if you only have four months like once in a lifetime you can say okay I do have the bucket list with I don't know Japan I want to go to see Thailand I want to be on Hawaii I want to see Galapagos Islands and then do all of those but that will be more expensive for the flights you will have a lot of flights so yeah it depends on are you going to travel in the future again and tick off all the bucket list points anyway sooner or later or do you more like 
Now is the time, now or never, gotta do it, bucket list travels, let's go. And the last point that comes into play also is the first point of the when question, because weather and climate might make a difference. For example, when planning the trip through Central America, I was looking specifically for tornado seasons and stuff like that to be at the right place in the right time. And something like that comes into play in most regions of the world. When you are in Europe, for example, in winter, like from November till February, March, it might get quite cold. So you might skip that and rather be somewhere else. But that also comes into play for the when question. There might be seasons for something like winter and holiday season. To be in Finland for Christmas, for me, that's a bucket list point, like to see Northern Lights. Maybe there are events, like uh, back in the days when I first visited Thailand, there was the Songkran, the water festival. I would go for that again, like on purpose, to be there in April, just to, it, it, I think it's Chinese New Year as well. So to experience that again, it makes sense to be there at a certain time period. So either you're flexible with times and you say, okay, I can go in February because I want to see this or that, but I could also go in November because I want to see this or that. And then you have to decide which one is more valuable to you. Or if you have a certain time period, for me it was like, okay, work is willing to let me go for this period of time. Where do I want to go from November, December, January, February and a little bit of March? So what is my preference in this time? Are there festivals? What about the regions I want to go? And also what about the weather? So four down, last one to go, the how, but as I said in the beginning, this is going to be the biggest one. And we are starting off with transportation. And for me, that is not really a question I could answer because it always totally depends on what you want to do. I had an offer once when I was in Australia from an older couple and they were traveling up the east coast of Australia and they were searching for a deckhand to help out. I hadn't had the time otherwise I would have loved to do that but I'm always in for adventures in Southeast Asia I love to be around with a scooter but for traveling from place to place I really like buses all the time because they are cheap you will see a bit of the surroundings of the rural areas as well maybe and same goes for trains sometimes night trains might be a good option because it saves you a night and I think the second thing that comes into play here is the time you have because when you're traveling in the nighttime, you will save some daylight and some daytime to do something else but on the other hand you might be pretty exhausted in the morning because you might not get the best sleep in those trains and buses depending on the region you are in. I heard the European trains are really good. In the Thai trains I didn't found any good sleep at all and I was waking up and I was like hammered. So that was really rough. And if you're on a tighter time schedule, flights might be a better option for you. So decide and see what your schedule has to offer for the experience. Go without flights and try everything else. That's my recommendation if you have the time for that. Food is an obvious one for me. Always go for local food. That is part of the experience. If you're traveling, you should try what that country has to offer. You should try to get into families if you have the option to. I always had the coolest experience. Like in Indonesia, I was driving around with the scooter and it was pouring rain. And so I searched shelter somewhere and then the family invited me in and they were like, oh, it's raining, come on in. They didn't speak too much English. But it was a really cool experience. They offered food and I was trying to communicate and talk to them. And it was just 
a really cool vibe and experience. I learned and saw how they lived and that was like more that I could have learned from any book or movie or I don't know. So always try that, try to get in somewhere and if it's just a barroom for example which is like a street restaurant in uh, southeast asia or in indonesia then go for that and if you are able to get like into some family business stuff like that and they are inviting you in always say yes except it's a white van and they have candy then run now with accommodation you might think same goes for that but uh, for my experience as I grow older I don't really want to go couch surfing anymore and I really got the feeling that my ambitions for going into hostels are slowly declining. I prefer to have an Airbnb or a whole room to myself nowadays. But on Airbnbs I really like when you are kind of um, staying with a local and then you can talk to them and maybe ask some questions or they will tell you. Sometimes they have good tips for what to do in the surroundings but sometimes they are also teaching about life in the country and about culture, maybe about politics and maybe they will invite you in for dinner. In our normal schedule number four is the people as I already said, get in touch with locals either at your accommodation, at your restaurants, on the streets, wherever, whenever you can. Just try to have some conversations with your taxi or tuk-tuk driver. That always worth the effort, the anxiety fight or whatever holds you back, but it's always worth it. It will almost always end up with a smile and a new friend or someone you connected for a little while with so yeah highly recommend that number five is the activities like always and i already said that in the last video the worst thing you can do in my opinion is to go really really cheap on that and try to save money on experiences because that is what your Therefore, like that's what you want to experience. Sure, you can go on a budget and you can have a lot of experience without spending money, but I n almost never ever regret spending money on a cool experience, a cool adventure, a helicopter ride on Hawaii. Pretty expensive. I do not regret it at all. Same goes for dives. I spent so much money on dives on this trip, but it was totally worth it. Every single one of them. There were shitty dives in those dives, but still I would pay for them just for the chance. Like you can't predict what you see down there and sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not, but just for the chance for it. And it was worth it one or the other time. In Cohiba National Park, I went twice for the same dive because the first one blew my mind and I don't regret spending the money again, even though we didn't see too much cool stuff on the second dive. It was worth it. And those will be experiences you will carry around with you for the rest of your life so they might worth a dollar or two. Number six is the weather, which I already talked about. So the only thing left to say is always check the weather forecast, the climate charts and stuff like that before you go. If you have a region where you're like, I want to go there, I'm not flexible on time, then at least be prepared whatever comes your way. Number seven, I always discuss the snorkeling and diving part for specific countries. As I can't do that for the longer trip, the only how and take away on this for me is maybe have a good plan before going and decide whether you take your own gear or not, especially when you're on a longer trip. Like in Costa Rica, I didn't go for snorkeling and diving even once. 
so I'm pretty happy that I didn't took too much gear with me because I would have carried it around a lot without using it and then might have regretted it so yeah when I when I go to Southeast Asia I always pack it because you always have like beaches and um, certain areas where you can have a good snorkel so having your own gear with you and be able to jump in whenever that's really cool so yeah plan ahead and plan wisely and then decide whether to take on gear or not when there is a good spot in most occasions it's possible to rent something over there anyways now we come to the most valuable items and wait a second that was this one I feel pretty old saying this, but that's a mix of a suitcase and it got wheels underneath, but it also, and that's the cool part, has straps in here. So in case you will have to walk over the beach for your next accommodation, you can strap that to your back and just walk. But in all the other occasions, like on the street, at the airport, those wheels and that uh, and that pull out handle worth gold it's just perfect it's easy and there's a lot of space in it if you want to know more about this let me know in the comments below and then i might make a special video just about this back in the days i would have hated future me for having something like that because i was like yeah backpack is the only way and all the old people taking stuff like that but to be honest backpacks you will carry around a lot and especially for me it was always kind of a struggle because i had a backpack on my back and then i had a camera bag in the front so that was really heavy on the shoulders and that was not fun and now i got the camera back just normally on my back and then dragging that thing behind me and i'm absolutely fine so that's the first recommendation second one is always pack sunscreen as much as possible because it's going to be very expensive everywhere and you will need it always put on sunscreen never go short on that because that's your health don't play around with it something i had to learn i had a lot of sunburns before learning that lesson but nowadays i'm at least a little smarter on that topic yes and the third one is this little guy which is a travel adapter and this one is really cool because it has a lot of different plug-ins so you can plug in each and every if it's European American or whatever you can plug it in and on the other side you can pull out European you can pull out Asian you can pull out American so you can plug it in everywhere and you only need one adapter and if you go somewhere like spontaneously when you decide ah, Central America sucks ass <laughs> I want to go to Southeast Asia again you are already set up for that and it's it's a little heavy but it's not too heavy and which is really important there are like multiple plugins for USB which will save you on another thing and that is an item I regret taking with me and that was a multiple plug because normally I'll take one travel adapter and then I put that in and then I have like three plugins for the worth of one travel adapter but I didn't need that at all because I was totally fine with the USB adapters and one normal socket. So yeah, I could have left it that back home. And also the clothesless line was totally unnecessary because either there was one in the accommodation anyways or the laundry already dried the clothes. So I carried it all through all the countries and back home 
just for nothing. So better leave that back home. Next topic is the language and for me it was kind of sad. I tried to do a course on Spanish before going to Central America. I did a Spanish course like 10 plus years ago and most of the knowledge is gone by now so I wanted to do a refresher but I couldn't find the time for that and that was really annoying but on the go I learned a little bit back by yeah just he hearing Spanish which was kind of okayish but for different parts of the world like I have never ever learned Chinese or any African language. So then my tip always is always try to get the basics in at least like hello, bye, thank you, you're welcome, pardon, stuff like that. So or maybe asking for prices in the local language that will make people smile, that will make people kind of like you and that will make them be more open for to help you because they see your effort so they are more likely to put on effort themselves and it's always cool to learn something like that and some words are still in my head some of them I can't really put into the language like kapkun I'm pretty sure it's Thai and I'm pretty sure it's thank you but I'm not sure, I'm confusing it with some Indonesian words like Sapatika. I'm not really sure which language and which country, but I'm sure that it's one of those basic and it's from Southeast Asia. But yeah, for going there, maybe just on the go, like there are apps for everything and there are apps for languages as well. You could translate when you're there, but if you are like already got it in your mind and then speak a little freely and openly, I think that's the best way. Who is a long trip for? And I guess it's absolutely not for everyone because it might come the time that you miss home. It might come the time you miss your family. It might come the time you miss your friends. So in my opinion, for most people, it might be better to not go on your own, but there are also people who are better off being on themselves and they will make way more experiences when they are forced or if they are willing to do it by themselves. And that will also give you more freedom if you're just by yourself. I guess you should ask yourself, is there a fire in me? If I am watching videos like this or travel videos, am I intrigued into going on a longer trip or do I think, nah, I need my, I don't know, my shower, I want to poop at home or whatever it is. Can I withstand this need or wish for a longer while? Because it might come the time. This also answers the question, who is it not for? If you're really, really bonded with your family and you can't imagine staying away from them for longer than two weeks, then maybe don't. Sometimes that might be a good learning process to do it anyways, but then maybe go for a four weeks trip first and see how that goes and then you can decide if you take it a step further because I think it's not really cool to be on the way to be away and then suddenly realizing nah that's not for me I'm coming back shit I rented out my house I quit my job now I'm here and I got nothing that doesn't feel good so Plan according to your feelings and your abilities. Guides, tours versus self-made travels. I'm always on the self-made side, but that depends on you and what you feel more comfortable with and what your skill set is. For Especially for Southeast Asia, I feel really confident in being able to schedule stuff and to have a feeling on what times to schedule for what and stuff like that. For other regions, maybe not so much. And for some trips, you can't even do them on yourself. And then you should do your research pretty good and then decide who to trust with your travels. 
for internet and phones, you basically, to my knowledge, have two options because the third one isn't really an option. So first we get that out of the way to use your SIM card and pay roaming uh, prices and stuff like that. No, don't do that. Then second option is to buy a SIM card in each and every country. And that is what I did. That gets quite pricey, but for me it was quite okay. There is a third option. I didn't dive too much into it so far, but there are eSIMs. So you can keep your SIM card, but it will transform into a SIM card for the country you are in. So you're going in there and then your provider will notice and then you pay other prices and not the roaming prices. So decide which option is for you. Deep dive into it maybe more than me, but yeah, you can't really go wrong with buying a SIM card everywhere. It's kind of annoying, but it is an option and it works quite well. Now for the safety aspect of travels. Yes, you are not in your safe environment. You are not in your usual environment. So some situations and some places might be none of your knowledge. They might be absolutely unfamiliar and sometimes you will not even know how to act or react in certain situations. And that might be scary and that can get quite scary and sometimes dangerous as well. First tip here, always try to act smart. I don't always do that and follow my own lead. Um, like don't go into dark alleys with someone just because they say they have cheap cigars to sell you. Maybe just say, nah, I'm fine and then leave. And always research for the region you're going into. For Panama City, I heard before that there are certain areas in the city which are not too safe. So I googled them and then I tried to avoid them as good as possible. Also, sometimes it helps if you don't just go on yourself, but with our taxi drivers, when we were driving through certain areas of Panama City, he was locking the car from the inside. So you were like, okay, this might not be the best place to get out <laughs> and I think he might have warned us as well if we would have said maybe just drop us off here. So yeah, I think that's a really important part to research well and then behave accordingly or maybe skip on some places as sadly as it is, especially as a female solo traveler. It is not too easy. I just came back from Sri Lanka, but you will have to wait for those videos for a little. But that is the number one safest country for solo female travelers. It is cheap. It is really beautiful. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to not miss out on those videos because they are going to be fire. And if you're down there already, maybe leave a like for this video as well. Thank you very much for that. Let's move on. Visa regulations are always depending on where you are coming from. I am from Germany and that is quite a powerful passport and gives you a lot of options to get into countries with visa on arrival or you can just get into the country even without a visa. But you should always plan beforehand because you don't want to be at the airport and be like, nah, I don't have the tourist card. Yeah, but you need that to get into Cuba. Can I get it now? Nope. Okay, what's the option? Get out of the country. You don't want that. So better plan beforehand and also you might need some money for that. So that makes sense sometimes that you get some currency for the country to be able. But in most cases, it's pretty easy to pay um, with dollars or with euros even or just with your credit card anyway. So that's not the biggest problem in my experiences. And you should also check other regulations that might come into play 
especially like in times of COVID, there were a lot of regulations like PCR tests and stuff like that. And for some countries, there are some regulations that you have to follow. So check them out beforehand, but that's pretty easy to Google culture shocks and for me that's always a good thing because I really like to have a culture shock because that's what I'm there for. I don't want to go into a country that is just like my country because then I just could stay home. So yeah, I really like that. If you're overwhelmed with that and that happens from time to time, it can help to Take a step back, maybe have an accommodation which provides everything that you need for comfort and then you can just get back into your room and chill down and cool down maybe for half a day, maybe for a day and then when you're ready you're going out again and same goes for your individual feeling of like I myself I don't really like really big big cities like Bangkok first time whoa that was overwhelming I kind of liked it which was special about Bangkok but for example the really 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 big cities in uh, Indonesia that was too much for me and then I rather try to get out into the countryside as quickly as possible but maybe for you it's the other way around and you say no I don't want to go into the rural areas that seems kind of scary to me and I rather stay in the cities where I have everything that I need and it's a little more normal to me so yeah decide for you what suits you better and which might give you comfort but also step out of your comfort zone from time to time to challenge yourself and make new experiences and a point that was mentioned in the comments in the last video was scams and they are pretty specific for each and every country so it's not too easy to warn you about scams but I guess for a lot of things goes use your brain and your heart if, it, if something doesn't feel right it might not be right you should always have a good feeling for where your luggage is where all your valuables are especially like your passport your credit card and stuff like that if like my suitcase is gone with uh, i don't know with a lot of clothes and stuff like that that is quite bad but if my camera bag is gone for myself that would be ouchy because i want to have that for the rest of my trip and yeah passport and credit card that is that sucks if that's gone that makes a lot of headaches a lot of work and a lot of stress and that will consume all your time and you will not have a chill time anymore and might even want to go home right at that time so yeah be aware of that first and then maybe look up some scams some specific scams for the region or the country you're going to pocket theft something like that is always something to consider be mindful when using your laptop i always have my laptop with me i always have my phone with me take those and be mindful of those Maybe think about taking a VPN with you, a virtual private network that might save you from some scams and also has some other advantages. If you want to know more about that, there is a ton of videos about that on YouTube. Maybe check those out. And as I said, this was a suggestion from one of you and I already included that before. But maybe you have some more ideas or questions, then let me know them down below and then I will answer them first in the questions and might even include them in future videos as well. I know, I know, I know the video might be quite long by now, but there are some more questions to answer and those might be interesting for you as well. So bear with me, stay with me. First one of which is how to get the time for such a trip. And I already mentioned that in the last video a little bit. One chance is ask at your job 
if like for us there is something like sabbatical and then you will get just uh, a percentage of your wage for a certain amount of time and then you will go off and don't work but get the rest percentage in that amount of time. So you will be paid without working. So even if you are abroad, you will stay get a percentage of your normal wage. That's an option. Or for myself, I put away money all year long. And then when I was away, I was paying everything from that money that I put aside. That is an option. And you could also try to make use of some gap times. In Germany, it's quite common to do that after you finish school and before going to uni or start working somewhere, doing a apprenticeship or traineeship or stuff like that and have a gap in between and use that time period to go to Australia for work and travel for example. That's another option to go some places and work there and make some money there. I was in uh, Australia as well for work and travel and was working like two months getting some money, traveled for a month and then repeat all over again so that might be an option as well to use to get a longer trip or you wait for retirement and then do that but nah. another topic to tackle is what to do with your home and i already told in the last video we kept paying the rent I wouldn't do that again because that's a lot of money down the drain. So also for this one goes maybe if you have a gap in switching places, if you have to move out somewhere anyways, or if you have to move to another city because you have another job, but that's starting in like three months and you'll be like, okay, two months being away, having no home, having no rent to pay, and then come back early and have one month maybe to search for a new place to stay. And in that time period, maybe stay with parents, friends, or at a hotel in worst case or stuff like that. So that might help as well. I would always try to rent out my place in the future if I can and if it's only for a period of time or having someone helping you maybe and then renting it out via Airbnb for just a couple of nights or something like that. But that always requires someone to handle and manage that. So it's not the easiest option. The topic of insurances isn't too easy to answer for me as a German. It makes sense to check your insurances beforehand to have something for like when you're damaging a car. Most of the times when renting a car there is an insurance included or paid extra. But if you're hurting someone with that or stuff like that, then it's good to have an insurance maybe back home for health insurances. Quite expensive sometimes, but really really good especially when like i did you slide into a pandemic that's quite good to have a health insurance and maybe have an insurance that helps you come back home which i really didn't but it would have not covered something like a pandemic back then anyways but nowadays i guess that's a little easier to find something covering that then one of the highest recommendations but the hardest to fulfill is be flexible it will always be more fun that way it will save you a lot of money that way but it's not always possible depending on how you get your time off you might not have too much influence on stuff like that but be flexible on the way like when we traveled into a new country in Central America most of the times like uh, 8 out of 10 I don't know we didn't know when we will leave the country that is kind of tricky sometimes because at the border control they will ask you when are you leaving the country then you're better off if you say yeah in 30 days or less than the month sometimes you have to provide a ticket but there are ways around that to make sure that you will leave the country but it's always 
a cooler and better feeling to just go with the flow. Sometimes you might want to stay at a place for a day longer. Sometimes you will recognize mm, this Airbnb is not as nice as I thought and this place, the whole city doesn't have too much to offer. I would rather to leave today than tomorrow. And if you're able to do that, that makes it that more enjoyable. And the last one for today is have a real time off. Yes, it might be nice to work now and then or if you can do online work. <sighs> yeah, maybe I would do that as well if I could because it could extend my stay because I could stay longer. But to really be free and like just let your head drift off. Maybe that's the better lesson to learn. If you can do a job that doesn't stuff your brain and drain your heart down, then do that. Get a couple of dollars, but on the way, maybe do a job at a farm and just do something different. For me, I have quite a demanding job like mentally and psychologically and so a time off really helps with that but it only helps if you really have time off if i would have gotten calls all the time from work i would not have been able to just switch off and just be in the moment and to enjoy it all the way and i guess if you do something like that you might only do that once in a lifetime. Enjoy it as much as possible. If you can extend the stay by doing some work, do that. But if that works, but if that work is getting from your experience and lower that down, nah, maybe rather don't do it. Now that sounded quite sad, but it is a good thing because that is what such a trip can provide as well. A real time off and just renew yourself, just gain some energy, gain a lot of knowledge, experiences, experiences, experiences. I can't stress that enough and just an enjoyable time. And if you're going with someone that might bond you even closer, if you are close before even then, it might be even better afterwards. So yeah, do such a trip. Now you know how. If you have more questions, like I said, leave them down below. Also subscribe to the channels for the next adventures to come because there's one special video. And after that, there is another country which is not completely new to this channel but like that's a couple of islands i already said that i guess in another video which are close to africa and there is a whole series about that coming up and i'm already working on them and I really like them myself. I hope you do too. See you in those next ones. Until then, enjoy life. Have a really nice planning and fire face with a lot of joy and fulfillment in planning your trip. And let me know if you've done a trip, if you're on a trip and if you enjoy it as much as I do. And your coolest experience just type something into the comments I'm always so curious to hear from you and I really enjoy that enough talking have a good one until next time